don't know everything that I saw of Ghana it was just it made me so hyped it made me so hyped I I'm gonna show you guys right here <laughs> watch <laughs> Welcome to my channel. I have a new video for you today and I just had to come in my robe because we're all queens and kings and Beyonce had to remind us in case you forgot Beyonce reminded us about that this past week so this is definitely not the type of robes she was talking about but we're just gonna play with the theme. <laughs> Also, excuse my hair. I didn't have time to gel my edges or anything. It is late. Late, but I wanted to get this video out for you guys and just debrief and discuss the best film of 2020. <laughs> yes. Yes. I said it. Who gonna check me? Let's get into all of that. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe. If this is your first video and you like what you're seeing, definitely subscribe down below and like and give it a big thumbs up and comment down below as well. Let's continue the conversation and just talk more about how sickening this whole thing was. Beyonce Giselle Nils Carter dropped Black is King on July 31st. You know, I... I wanted to watch it July 31st but I was exhausted and so I had to give my whole full attention to it so I decided not to watch it that night and then the next day my family and I were supposed to watch it on zoom didn't happen so another day goes by and I'm like all right I'm seeing things and I'm not a part of the fabulousness that's going on so Finally, I got to watch it Saturday after forcing my best friend, not that she didn't want to watch it, but we also had planned to watch something else, and because I hadn't watched it by then, I was like, I'm going to break at this point if we don't watch this, and so, so she did it, and she watched it with me, and I can finally say I've seen Black is King, and it did not disappoint. I am so, so happy. It was, oh, goodness. Okay, before I even get into all that, I am going to talk about my five best parts. So I'm gonna just cut it down to five things that I really, really, really loved from the film and uh, talk about that. But I feel like within those five parts, I'm gonna include everything that I love. So don't worry. So number one, number one, and I have to say this, First, of course I do. She put on for Ghana. Ghana was on the map there. Oh, Ghana was on the map. We were there. We were front and center. They had people had their flags. Like I was so so happy because what I try to do with this channel is I, I talk about my experiences going to Ghana, growing up in Ghana and all that and I, I try to put on for Ghana as much as I can hopefully when you know I get a little bit bigger I can put Ghana more on the map and just show you guys more of my culture but Beyonce who has the platform already she, she didn't even just do it for Ghana, she did it for all of Africa. It was basically like a love letter to Africa. Like, you are home, and you are beautiful, and you have so many amazing things a part of you, and I just want to show you off to the world. Show you off that the world, the parts that the world doesn't get to see. The, the culture, the history, the outfits, the glam, everything. Like... Africa was put on. It was beautiful. But I will say maybe that was my favorite part, the already music video. Already um was performed by Shata Wale, a Ghanaian artist and Beyonce and it's my favorite song on the whole thing. You know, it's the one I gravitated to the most. 
might be biased, but it is. Um, but, like, it's on the same level as Brown Skin Girl, so they're, like, my number two, like, one and two favorite songs on the album. But, yeah, um, it was beautiful. I loved seeing, like, different images in Ghana and Pendant Square, where our dances, ah, the dances were in there, the, you know, just our roads, our, I don't know, everything that I saw of Ghana, it was just, it made me so hyped. It made me so hyped. I, I'm gonna show you guys right here. <laughs> Watch. Love it. Love the visuals. Hey, fuck it up. Fuck it up. Here we go, Ghana. Put on for us. Hey. Long with the king, your king. Fuck it up. Fuck it up. <laughs> yes. Ghana. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. This is the best song off of this album. Hey, I love how she's doing all the dances. Hey. Hook it up. Ready? Ghana! Ghana! Hey, Ghana. 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 That was it. Ghana stand up. Ha! That was amazing. Best part. It was amazing. I, as you can see, I was gagging the whole time. There was one thing that before I watched it, I was talking to two friends of mine and they were saying that there was some criticism before. Um, just from the trailer, seeing that it was a lot of traditional Africa being shown. And from the commercial, it looked like that, that it was just, you know, some of it was mostly just like the stereotypical images that we see of Africa. And we're more, we are that, but we are much more than that because that's already what America sees. And so I was a little worried going into it if it was just going to be, you know, just that. But it's Beyonce and Beyonce wouldn't do that. <laughs> the heck? It's Beyonce. No, no. She wouldn't do that. So I don't know why I even doubted her. I don't know why my friends doubted her. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I, we didn't doubt her. But we were a little worried. And she did a great job of mixing the traditional and showing that that's where we started from and that's what we do and incorporate in all parts of our you know being and it's still beautiful it's still a part of us but we are also so much more than that and just it showed everything it was oh, I loved it <laughs> And you guys, I've only seen it once. I'm about to watch it again after this. I didn't want, I wanted to give you guys my first impressions. My first impressions and not like dissect it too much. Maybe I'll do like a part two if I see more than what I already did. But yeah, this is my first impression. So from that, I got that she showed her love for Africa and love in the tradition, love in the current part of it and love in what we are and what we hold in our power and how great we, like great of a power that we have and what we can use to just continue to elevate ourselves. And that's, oh, you guys don't know how inspired I was. I, I had a lot of things cooking after this because Beyonce told me not to be mediocre. And Lord, I am definitely not going to be mediocre. I already knew that, but remember, Beyonce just reminded us. She, just, you know, she, she's just there to remind us. I need to put like a big Beyonce picture <laughs> on my door every time I leave. I just remember who I am. And also, um, I'm not too keen on how many designers and uh, designers and people behind the scenes 
that were from Africa, that were black, that were used, but I heard it was a lot and that's so beautiful that we had the opportunity to be featured. You know, a lot of times we're not the first ones chosen to do grand, grand scale type of production. So the fact that Beyonce gave a lot of black designers and a lot of black um, producers, people behind the scenes filming, all that, uh, all the images, all the people dancing, all the people involved, the black artists, the African artists, it was amazing. And the fact that she gave them an opportunity to be a part of this and showcase that, that's beautiful. And it, I, it's not also just up to Beyonce to do that. I believe what she was trying to show is that you can still have beautiful and quality productions using black people, using Africans. You can. So try it. <laughs> this is not the first time that Beyonce has used black designers, black dancers, black artists. Like She does this constantly and she shows you that we are up to par no matter how much the world tries to say we're not or whatever we are up to par and you can use us use our creativity use our ideas but don't use it and abuse it and yes Beyonce did just that and so I hope that this also showcases not even just Beyonce doing this but this whole time quarantine and COVID and being inside like it's sh it, I hope it's giving people really that like hey <laughs> we're here too you know and it's time to stop ignoring us we've been telling you this for so long and i'm glad that people are finally waking up to that so this was an amazing and beautiful time to do this i'm so glad she it was released in 2020. i did have a question though where was Burna Boy? Does anybody know where Burna Boy was? Because he definitely had two songs on there, right? He, he was a part of two songs. And I'm just... Where was he? Like, you make time for the queen. <laughs> you make time to be in Beyonce's whatever. She tells you, no, I'm kidding. If he was busy, I understand. But if it was me, I would have canceled definitely though if it was something he was going through i totally understand but if it wasn't where was berna where was berna okay number two the outfit i'm gonna show you my two favorite outfits i'm gonna put it right there but i need to look at it and just like oh this one right here i'm, I'm putting it on the screen it's the bedazzled look it was so beautiful and it just reminded me like or what it was meant to show what I feel like is that we're full of diamonds we're, we're we can be of status of class and just show off our bougie like yes the crystal outfit beautiful like beautiful it the designer was D blue dazzled he definitely showed how to be dazzling in diamonds and that was beautiful gorgeous the glasses does it say B on her does that say B well in the post that she's taking right now it looks like it says B on her in diamonds it's just the little the little accents oh, so gorgeous if I was to wear that couldn't tell me anything oh I'm gonna put this on this isn't my favorite outfit but I love this hair it's um the braids on top of her head and it was paying homage to the hairstyle worn by the Mangbetu woman and she's done this before she's done this style of hair before and she constantly pays tribute to these women so it that was beautiful to see beautiful images and my number one favorite outfit was the cheetah one 
because I have been a cheetah sister all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when the Cheetah Girls came out and I just love it. I just feel like sometimes Cheetah can be tacky. You got to know how to really do it and I don't even have to say it but Beyonce knew what to do and did it and made it great. So I'm going to bring back out my Cheetah outfits and I'm going to make it do what it does because this outfit is so beautiful it's so like bougie regal it's our like it's also supposed to represent africa and just uh, cheetah's fast the cheetah's fierce the cheetah's fearless and that is what she showed in mood forever like that that was the perfect this is my mood forever i'm i'm a queen <laughs> number three Blue Ivy. Blue Ivy was, she looked beautiful. She already just shows that type of confidence. That's why it trends on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. Like, you know, Blue Ivy's the real artist and Beyonce's her, or Beyonce's her publicist or whatever, you know, like, and Beyonce doesn't move unless Blue Ivy says she needs to move. And you, you get that from her, you just, she is such a beautiful young lady and I hate the fact that when she was first born and you know she was growing up there were all these people saying ugly nasty things about her hair about her face anything like I just don't get why people can be so cruel to a child who doesn't ask for any of these things who's already innocent in the world and when she grows up and she's actually like reading up on you know how she came into this world and all the things back in that day she'll read that but I think that is also why Beyonce made brown skin girl to just remind her to find the beauty in herself and know that no matter what she's beautiful and she doesn't need to listen to whatever anybody else has to say and i'm just sad that that had to happen in when she was first born but i love that she has that reinforcement from beyonce from the song from the images that she's constantly put in front of like Blue Ivy's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And you know, sometimes when you're like the kid of the star, you sometimes aren't going to be up there, but I just, or not on the same status as, as your parent, and it's kind of hard for you to reach there. I don't doubt that for Blue Ivy. I don't doubt that at all. I feel like she is going to be her own force. Like, with that type of confidence, with that type of love surrounding her, I just, she's amazing. She's amazing. She's an inspiration, honestly. So I love the images that she was, I love the parts that Blue Ivy was in. She was into everything. She looked happy. And yeah, she's just such an amazing little child. I barely know her, but that. <laughs> That's my cousin. <laughs> Number four, the images. The images, the images were amazing. They were so beautiful. If I had to give one critique of the whole film was I felt like they moved a little too fast. And that's why I feel like I have to watch it five, six times to get everything because I feel like I missed a lot the first time. But the images that I did see they were beautiful and like I already said they showcased Africa they showcased you know black culture African culture all of it it was just mind-boggling how much effort how much time you know Beyonce like no matter what she do does she no matter what she does she puts effort time research love into everything and you definitely saw that you definitely definitely saw that so the images everything meant something I have no doubt about that every outfit every scene everything meant something and the the, the images 
all had to reinforce that no matter what part of it no part no matter what part no matter what song we were in it all reinforced the message the images were so beautiful they were so calculated she really put time into that even like having dark-skinned women all throughout it showing it, it made me feel if I had that growing up I just I don't know where I would be <laughs> if I had so many dark-skinned women images in my life like that would have been amazing and so I am so thankful for the images that she put throughout this and the time that she put to bring all that out and lastly I already kind of mentioned it but it was the message the message is the most important part of this if you didn't get the message through it I I don't know if I completely got the message like I said I'm gonna rewatch it but from what I got from it it was you know calling those that don't know where they're from to really come back and find their way back do you she started with you're part of something way bigger you're part of more than wherever you are in the world you are part of something bigger you are part of a bigger message um, a bigger part of where you are right now and no matter what you also need to find your way back and that was the next song find your way back to your roots and so I definitely love that because fortunately I know where I'm from in Africa and so ever, growing up I loved bringing people into my house showing them Ghana showing them those images if they were black if they were from you know if they were not black people I just I still loved showing them that part of me and so for me to already have that part of myself kind of figured out it's really important and I loved the fact I love the fact that people are finding themselves and trying to go and do their ancestry and stuff and things like that um yeah so I just hope that eventually we can all kind of like find our way back because she's like it it goes towards the future message of we have to embrace our root I loved the message of you know it was about a boy growing up to be into king into a king but without the queens around him without the women around him he would not be where he needed to be so that is always something to keep in mind you people who raise sons and people men that are out there you need to remember that the women a part of your journey are as important and you don't you need to shade them you don't need to say they're not exotic um because they're not exotic they're not beautiful or whatever your definition of exotic is like hello we're all kings and queens and we all need to embrace and accept each other and build each other up yeah but in all everything just made sense like spirit when it first came out with lion king um, then she brought out Black Parade. All of that made sense and it tied together with this. Like, we just have to invest back into our, our love, into our roots and just uplift Africa, uplift ourselves, you know, hold ourselves to high standard. Keep love, keep self-identity important, family important. Raise those things and just continue to raise those images that you have all around you, your love, your self-identity, your beauty, you're beautiful. That was the constant reminder, we're all beautiful. So yeah, oh my goodness, Black is King was amazing. I hope you liked it. If you haven't watched it, definitely go watch it. But um, if you watched it already, watch it again like I'm going to. Um, and if you like this video, if you want me to do more videos like this, comment down below. Join the family. My name is AC Coakley. I'm in love with Beyonce. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that jazz. Love you guys.